Fortnite and Call of Duty are some of the biggest live service games in the industry right now. Among many modern live service games, I've been noticing a trend regarding how they approach their main menus and UI. It's a problem with some of the most popular releases, further highlighted with Fortnite's item shop and the newly released Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Menu design and UI is an underrated aspect of a video game's practicality and presentation, especially as a first impression. The idea for this video was inspired by one of the comments of a previous video, and the next upcoming video is directly from a user's request. So if you've got any ideas of games to check out or topics to discuss, let me know. I read every comment, even the mean ones. I'll need to drum up some examples in order to articulate my exact problems at first. So bear with me for a bit, and I think you'll see where I'm coming from. Cool? Cool. So where do I start with this? There's not a single obvious issue to point to, so I'm going to list some examples of games that all seem to have similar styles in their menus, with most of these games being live services. Not all of these games are live service games, but they still have similar menus that fall under the same criticism. However, the focus for today is going to be directed at the actual live service games. One thing I'd like to keep in mind is there will be some single player games discussed where I'll usually be focusing on the pause menu or the inventory menu rather than their actual main menus. The traditional pause menu for multiplayer games typically don't have many features since you're not meant to interact with it while you're in the middle of the game, whereas in a single player game, the function for the main menu is usually just to get you in the game quickly. It's a case by case basis. So for this video, you can assume that the menus I'll focus on for each game is usually the menu you're gonna be interacting with the most. For some examples of this issue, we've got Fortnite, the newer Call of Duty games, Gotham Knights, Marvel's Avengers, God of War, Destiny 2, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. How can I describe these menus? Very blocky. Squares, grids, rectangles. But this is just my personal distaste for how similar these all look. That's just my biased subjective opinion, so take that with a grain of salt. The real issue here is the bloat and clunkiness that permeates through most of these games' menus. Originally, I was just going to focus on a select few games, like Call of Duty and Destiny, and how unpleasant the user experience is, but instead I want to highlight a wider issue among so many big modern games and how repetitive they feel regarding their menus. Besides, I think there could be a whole separate discussion regarding Destiny and how unappropriate approachable the game is for new players, and the UI is a big part of that. The focus for today will be about a few of the other games mentioned, and how the UI is visually dull, as well as how cumbersome it can feel to navigate some of these menus. I'll keep this discussion separate from my personal opinion regarding the actual gameplay and everything else with these games. So what's exactly wrong with all of these menus? I'm going to break down the issues into two main categories. Number one, practicality, how the menu feels and functions, and number two, presentation. Does the menu fit the game or provide a tone that's appropriate for what the player should feel? Right off the bat with number one, I think using bigger shapes to convey the most important information for your menu makes complete sense. You want the player to be able to distinguish which buttons are most important for them, even if they couldn't read the language of the buttons. A great menu can be partially navigated even if you don't understand the language. You can use different colors and shapes to help draw the player's eyes to look at exactly where you want them to. But I think there's such a thing as overkill when it comes to that mentality. And I feel no game better represents that than the recent Call of Duty games. I can't tell if I'm supposed to be looking at a functional menu that's supposed to present me information neatly, or a filled out holiday calendar. This footage is from the original Modern Warfare 2 beta, but don't worry, I'm not cherry picking early footage. The recently released Modern Warfare 3's UI is copy and pasted, but for the sake of comparisons, we'll stick with Modern Warfare 2. This is unpleasant to look at. The division of information is confusing. It takes forever just to get exactly where you want to go, or find the right info. The use of giant squares and shapes takes up so much screen real estate that it makes your head spin and somehow feels like it's presenting you with too much information at once and also not telling you enough important info. As far as modern menu design goes, for me, this is some of the worst of the worst. Reminiscent of a freemium mobile game that may come across as neat but feels so awful to navigate. Let's compare the menu from Modern Warfare 2 from 2022 with the original Granddaddy from 2009. We'll stay focused on functionality and we're going to circle back to presentation later. When you boot up the game, you're presented with your three primary modes, all shaped as equal size to represent their significance, campaign, co-op, and competitive multiplayer. Click on an option and you're presented with an easy to read list that gives you the basics. For campaign, it's the essentials on top of some extra options and returning back to the main menu. Clean, clear, and easy to read. In the multiplayer menu, it's the exact same. A short and simple list that immediately presents the most important options only, with the most popular one located right at the top so you can't miss it. While the menu may look more simplistic than modern comparisons, I think that simplicity is much more a strength than a weakness. From a pure functionality standpoint, this menu is pretty flawless to me. 
No complaints or notes. Taking a look at the modern reboot, immediately there's some problems that stand out to me. There's much more going on in the main screen where you select your options, although it does retain the images on the buttons from the original game to differentiate the options and add a little bit of color and flair. I like the use of the yellow to highlight the find a match button, but what happened to it being situated at the top so your eyes are naturally drawn to it as the first thing you see? Maybe that's just a personal preference, but it feels awkward to have the most important option buried at the bottom of everything else, especially when that everything else is nowhere near as important as the button to play the game that cost you $70. One glaring issue is the Daily Challenges section takes up more space than the Play button. This wouldn't be as much of an issue if not for the fact that the Daily Challenges feels like it could be condensed into a list, reminiscent of the original game, rather than this giant block. I'll save presentation critiques for later, but it's not surprising that the original has actual atmosphere, as opposed to this dry, manufactured blob of nothing. Once you actually start selecting options, the issues persist. Take a direct look at the view for creating a loadout between the two games, or examining your weapons. Comparing these two, there's much more information flooding the screen that I feel could have either been cut or better condensed. The giant images of weapons down here could be condensed into a list, similar to the original Modern Warfare 2. I don't think it's necessary to have all these little diagrams visible at all times, although one could argue it could make it easier to scroll to the weapon you're looking for since the image might be more recognizable than the name. That's a fair choice. Moving on to the weapon details, the text is difficult to read because it's so small. While the modern reboot is presenting more information at once, it comes across as unnecessary clutter that could be trimmed. It's okay if this doesn't bother you or you've grown accustomed to the look, but when taking a first quick glance, there's no comparison for me. The original's presentation is stripped back, but feels much more thought out. I'm left wondering that if I somehow spend more time on the modern menu, that I inadvertently spend a couple of extra total hours playing the game, because navigating these menus feels like a labyrinth, then Bobby Kotick at Activision Blizzard gets another dollar in his yearly bonus because the income from the game is measured in total time spent on it. Does that all sound like a crazy conspiracy? Of course it does. I know that's not how game development works. But I'm left wondering that because A, I have an overactive imagination and paranoia, B, Activision Blizzard is evil, and C, my main takeaway from these menus is how much it feels like I'm wasting my time. Call of Duty isn't the only example of this style of menu, but it's the worst example in my opinion. If you take a look at Fortnite and many other live service games, the way the information is presented to you feels so visually bland. I respect the simplicity behind the simplified uniform shapes, but I feel like more could be done to distinguish these games from one another. I will say Fortnite gets points for having less of the screen taken up by the menu options. It feels cleaner and less cluttered, at least until we take a look at the cash shop. Again, I harbor a similar criticism. The big blocks and images are helpful in presenting the player with options for purchase, but I still feel this could be condensed into a list. However, the design for the shop makes much more sense to rely on giant shapes and images, since you're immediately showing the player exactly what they would purchase. This type of menu makes more sense given what's being offered, rather than 20% of the screen space being taken up to shove daily challenges in the player's face. These issues extend beyond live service games as well. I've noticed a similar style in games with a significant single player component, like Gotham Knights and Marvel's Avengers. But these games were heavily criticized and panned for poor monetization practices and gameplay that revolved around grinding and loot. Is there a connection between all these games that makes them adopt this similar style? I don't think it's just because most of these games are online or have loot and grinding to them, because I'm left wondering about Diablo, a series with one of the earliest examples of loot and grinding based gameplay, and Diablo 4 is online only. However, I feel that Diablo 4 handles its menus quite well. If we do a quick comparison between Diablo 4 and Destiny 2 for example, Diablo basically delivers the same relevant information to the player, while only needing a third of the screen to do so. Everything feels very smartly condensed, and it's much less overwhelming for me. Despite the similarities of Diablo to the previously mentioned games, I think Diablo is a great example of UI design for a game like this. Your mileage may vary, and Diablo also has a terrible cash shop and business practices, but thankfully for the most important menus you'll be interacting with in the game, they're pretty great. Again, this is just down to personal taste, but for me, I feel that some of the other games feel like poor imitations. A majority of these menus all make me feel the same way, in that I feel like my time is being wasted. Whatever the intention, the use of giant bland squares to present irrelevant information creates this visual blob and clutter that hampers my enjoyment. In most cases, a menu for a game should be quick, simple, and easy to navigate, something that never makes you think twice. 
unless a clunky UI is part of the game's design and mechanics, which I'll discuss later with a very popular game right now. Yet with all of these different games spanning different genres, all that time wasted on the menus adds up to frustration, since a video game's interface will be engaged with every single time you play the game. This frustrating clutter regarding navigation leads right into the next problem, presentation. Let's go back to the previously mentioned Call of Duty games and start with the reboot. When I look at this menu, I don't really feel any sort of tone or atmosphere being presented. It just feels like the bare minimum effort when it comes to the personality of the game. It kind of reminds me of the personality of Fortnite's menu. To be fair to Fortnite, due to the nature as a battle royale with a focus on crossovers and cosmetics, it doesn't really leave much room for Fortnite itself to have much of an identity of its own. I might be wrong here, so take this with a grain of salt, but from my perspective, Fortnite's identity doesn't necessarily come from any specific feeling it wants to convey. It's just Fortnite. I feel that it meets the minimum requirement for what a video game main menu should be, because Fortnite feels just as much a form of social media as it does a video game, so I don't really see what kind of theme or character Fortnite can have when it tries to be so many things at once. I feel that the recent Call of Duty games harbor this same sentiment when it comes to their identity. The focus isn't so much on the world or personality that Call of Duty used to have, or rather the personality that each individual game would have. The Call of Duty releases from the early 2010s all had some variation with their personalities and identities that I feel has been a bit diluted in the modern era, with some notable exceptions. However, with the massive popularity of Warzone, which features its own crossover events and things akin to Fortnite, it feels like Call of Duty's identity and personality is now just shooter video game. It's a space to play a multiplayer game with friends without defining enough of a character on its own. I think the wider an audience that a video game tries to reach, the greater risk of losing any identity or personality that would make it otherwise stand out on its own. To me, this is directly represented in the main menu for the new Modern Warfare 2. Meanwhile, when you boot up the original Modern Warfare 2, you're immediately hit with nice character art and some extra effects like fog in the main menu. It may seem subtle, but I can still perfectly envision the main menu for the original Modern Warfare 2 despite not having played the game game in 10 years maybe? It sticks in your brain. There's plenty of space for the art to shine with the desaturated, bold colors, giving the menu so much more personality than just an ugly model of your game's character. Each section is given equal space and with different colors to differentiate them. Street Fighter 6 does a very similar thing with its main menu. We'll keep the focus on Call of Duty, but if you want to look at a game with an incredible menu and presentation all throughout, Street Fighter 6 is another great modern example. For Call of Duty, this hurts even more when you look at the menu for the remastered release of Modern Warfare 2 specifically when you're in the campaign section. You get these dynamic shots of moments from the campaign with updated visuals from the remaster, which is neat, but it doesn't have the subtle personality that the original has. This is very much a nitpick though for me. I just really like the desaturated, bold look of the original compared to these boring in-game renders. The dynamic camera is a nice effect, but for me, the simplicity wins out here. That's just my personal taste. I'd like to go into an example of a menu that I think is actually incredibly thematic and awesome from a visual standpoint, except it loses some of the practical as a result. It's my personal favorite video game of all time. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Yes, I think Prime 2 is better than the first. Prime 2 is a great example of a menu that totally nails the presentation department, but is a little ambitious with practicality. When you boot the game up, you're greeted with a sweet animation, otherworldly music that totally fits the game, and you get this. Now, I don't know if I've seen many other games that use a sphere for a menu. I guess Katamari Damacy, but that menu is thematically appropriate for that game and also easy to navigate. Another great main menu example alongside Street Fighter VI. This is kind of awkward. It feels just a bit slow when navigating and could come across as a bit confusing at first for some players. It definitely gives the menu a dynamic feel. This menu style also extends to the pause screen in the game when you want to check for information on anything you've scanned in other lore. While it may feel sluggish and awkward, it gets full points for personality and theming. Our main character Samus uses a fully alien power suit, so it's a neat idea for the technology of that suit to feel otherworldly to the player. From a pure bias standpoint, I love this menu, and when I was younger, I'd have stupid fun just spinning the menu in circles, but my opinion for basically anything related to Metroid is heavily skewed and untrustworthy. I acknowledge that this menu is cumbersome and could do with some streamlining for practicality. God of War 2018 falls under a similar category in my opinion. The coloring, background, and effects are nice touches that fit the Norse theme of the game. I don't care very much for these models of Kratos and Atreus. They feel kind of awkward to me just standing there, but the menu's atmosphere is fitting. However, I do feel the information could be presented in a bit tighter format. The main menu options take up a 
lot of room for the information they're presenting, and I've personally never liked using a cursor to navigate menus like this with a controller. That has always felt awkward to me, and I think I remember first noticing that in a game's inventory menu like the original Destiny. However, cursors have always been around. The earliest examples I can think of are in the original Super Smash Bros. and Capcom vs. SNK2. In those cases, I think the cursor is more appropriate since you're only doing one selection from a giant grid of characters, rather than using a cursor to navigate pages and pages of menus. Your mileage may vary as to whether or not you find cursors clunky to use as navigation. I will say that this problem is much less annoying when it extends to PC games, since the mouse is a perfect navigator for some of these menus. But back to God of War, this menu reminds me of the same clunky feeling that the Call of Duty and Fortnite menus do. Though it's not as egregious, and it at least gets points for personality that fits the game's tone and theme. So, what are some examples of games with a practical menu that also nails personality and identity? If you've seen the topic of UI in games, talked about at any point within the last five years, you've probably seen this game mentioned at least once. And it's for a very good reason. You never see it coming. I'm throwing objective analysis out for this one. Persona 5's menu is just awesome. It's bright, bold, and has an attitude that perfectly matches the rebellious spirit of the characters. The bolded menu options are easy to read and have a dynamic, colorful highlight whenever you're hovering over them. Selecting an option leads to a slick, unique transition with unique artwork for every single page, and the sound effects are nice and crisp. I could see some criticism being directed at the menu looking too busy, but I disagree. The energetic, over-the-top menu suits the theme and design of this game perfectly. Everything matches the spirit of rebellion. I love it. Not every menu needs to have the high energy and bold visuals that Persona 5 does. It would look completely out of place in something like God of War. But Having gorgeous hand-drawn artwork and transitions is something that I think could suit many different video game menus. I also love the asymmetrical nature too, with the options lined up in a slightly diagonal direction that leads to a nice split between the functional part of the menu and the artistic part. You never get lost because the visual elements are positioned in a way that immediately draws your eyes to the important, relevant information. For as helpful as the large yellow block is in Modern Warfare 2's menu, Persona's menu is designed in a way that doesn't need an obvious guide. I haven't even mentioned the different shots in the game that have their own unique animations and flair. You could make an entire analysis discussing the brilliance of Persona 5's user interface, and it likely wouldn't even have time to cover everything. This is all subjective, but man, I just love it. Stylish and unique UI design is something that Atlas is pushing forward more and more with their games, and I love to see a developer that puts energy and love into every inch of their games. Another wonderful example is Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It might seem simple at first, but I think it's a great way to add some personality to your menu without having to rely on incredibly bold and stylish animations like Persona. Your options are limited, and your most important options are right at the top of the screen in nice big circles. There's a nice motion effect when you hover over every option. It's quick, snappy, and most of all, clean. The use of different shapes is nice to separate gameplay menu options versus the smaller settings like saving and exiting. There's never too much information presented at once. You're given exactly what you need and that's it. Much more simple compared to Persona, but just as effective at conveying information to the player. It may be lacking a bit in personality, but it's clean and clear and you can't go wrong with it. A fun little bonus round to wrap things up. We've got the newest indie horror darling right now, Lethal Company. This skyrocketed in popularity as I've been thinking about this topic, and it's relevant to the discussion as well. When you first boot up the game, you're given a near blank screen for your options. To me, that bare bones instant first impression is very fitting for a horror game. Once in the proper main menu, it's quite simple, but the color combined with the bare menu reminds me a lot of the analog technology from 1979's Alien, which is explored even further once you're in the game. Most of the interaction activity with the game's menus doesn't actually happen in a traditional setting with a mouse, but rather with a computer terminal using your keyboard. Accessing the shop, navigating to different locations, and researching all happen through here. For anyone who's worked with a terminal before, this should feel right at home. While I could understand arguments expressing this clunky design for a menu and how some may prefer to have a mouse and keyboard to access all these functions, I'd argue that this is a case where the practicality of the menu is sacrificed in order to service the personality, and I think it's a smart choice. Just like in Ridley Scott's Alien, the crew interacts with the head computer of the ship through a similar analog terminal. All of their information is delivered through this method. In the film, it serves the horror elements as this crew's only means of contact with home is through a lifeless calculating machine. 
It works for Lethal Company in much the same way. The company does not care about you. They only care about the end result, the profits. They can't be bothered to spend money to provide the players with better, more intuitive hardware. You're the bottom of the barrel. You've got to work with the tools you're given to accomplish your task. These limited, scrappy tools serve the helplessness feeling. It can be stressful staying at the computer, trying to fumble through and type in the correct door codes, knowing that if you're too late, you may lose a teammate to the horrors that lurk inside. If I sound hypocritical praising this game's clunky UI while criticizing something like Call of Duty, I feel this is an important distinction to make. In Lethal Company, the clunky UI actually services the gameplay and personality, rather than hampering your enjoyment. Lethal Company's clunky UI is part of the gameplay experience, whereas in Call of Duty, the clunky UI is keeping you away from the actual gameplay experience. The main menu is an overlooked thing for many video games, but it's important to make a good first impression. A menu is more than just something you use to get to the game. It should be considered important too. There's beauty in a main menu that makes you want to keep playing. Whether it's slick and stylish like Persona, or dingy and clunky like Lethal Company, for me, the ultimate goal is to service both the game and the player properly. Maybe it's just a nostalgia in me, but when I think of some of my favorite games, some of the first things I think of are the main menus that introduce you to the world, and a good introduction is something worth remembering.